Hello everyone, it's been a little while since I've done a bookish video because Cinderella has been my life for the last couple months. However, I still have been reading, so I thought I would give you a little rundown of all the books that I have read from April till now. I use an app called Storygraph to track all of my reading and to log all of the books when I start reading them, when I finish reading them, uh, and then it gives you all of these stats, hence why it's called Storygraph. So if the book is registered as being emotional or mysterious or fast paced, slow, all of that kind of thing, it will then log all of the books as you go and it will give you various different graphs based on the pacing of the book, the moods of the book, uh, how many pages the book has, whether it's fiction or non-fiction, all that kind of stuff. Um, so it's really, really fun just to see the sorts of things that you lean towards when you are choosing the books that you read. I am not sponsored by Storygraph, they have no idea who I am, I'm just using it and really enjoying it and um, when I talked about it before a lot of people asked, so Storygraph is what I'm using to track my books and I've had to go back and have a look at my reading journal on Storygraph um, because I listened to some audiobooks um, so I don't have them physically uh, and I would forget that I consumed those books if I did not go back to Storygraph. So, the first book was not an audiobook, it was a book called Sweetly by Jackson Pierce, which I have had for longer than I care to admit and I've only just got round to reading it. I enjoyed it, I enjoyed it. It's a retelling of the fairy tale Hansel and Gretel and it was very slow to start um, and was heading in just a, like a very weird direction. Um, and then in the last quarter it like really picked up and got really good but also really weird and I think I liked that. <laughs> I can't really tell um, but every now and again I do remember this book so something about it has definitely stuck with me. Then I listened to The Graveyard Book by Neil Gaiman um, whilst I was walking. I did a lot of walking in the month of April and I loved The Graveyard Book so much. Having Neil Gaiman, who wrote the book, narrate the book, I think it just makes all the difference when an author narrates their own audiobooks, which is rich coming from me considering <laughs> I've only narrated two of my own books um, due to time constraints, no other reason than just time. But Neil Gaiman is a fantastic storyteller and he's just amazing at reading his own stories. So I loved the Graveyard book, I thought it was amazing. It's about a baby who escapes being murdered the night that his entire family are murdered um, and he crawls into a graveyard and all of the ghosts of the graveyard, oh my god I just love it so much even now I'm talking about it, all of the ghosts of the graveyard discover this baby and decide that they need to look after him and this human child grows up in the graveyard and is taken care of by all of these weird and wonderful and brilliant characters of the graveyard um, and they call him Bod which is short for nobody because they don't know where this child came from and it's just wonderful. It's so so wonderful. I loved every second of listening to it. I'm gonna go slightly out of order because I then went on a real Neil Gaiman kick. I've never read anything by Neil Gaiman before um, and I loved listening to him narrate that audiobook so much that I then went on to listen to The Ocean at the End of the Lane, which I love just as much as the Graveyard book. In fact, that one has stuck with me even more so and it's also just been turned into a play um, and I really wanna go and see it because the trailer always plays before all of the YouTube videos that I wanna watch. Um, that's marketing at its finest. It's about a middle-aged man who goes back to his childhood home and he spends the afternoon reminiscing about him and his friend Letty. This pond that she convinced him was actually an ocean and suddenly all of these memories start flooding back of things that he's kind of blocked from his mind because they were so strange and fantastical and quite traumatizing for a child to go through um, and it's, it's great. It's really good. And then I listened to Coraline, which I enjoyed, I did enjoy it, but I think because The Ocean at the End of the Lane and The Graveyard Book are so much my thing, Coraline just didn't quite reach the heights 
of those two previous lessons, um, but I did still really enjoy it. Um, and it's one of his most famous works, arguably. Um, Coraline is um, about a girl called Coraline um, who goes exploring in her family's new flat and finds a door that during the day when she tries to show her parents, when she opens it, there's just a brick wall behind it. But then one day she opens it or she hears voices coming from this open door and suddenly there's a corridor that leads her into sort of an alternate reality it's kind of the flat that she's moved into but everything's sort of backwards and like a mirror image um and her parents are there but her parents both have buttons for eyes and it's terrifying and the mother will do anything to keep Coraline in this weird alternate reality and to stop her from going home. So yeah, I really enjoyed Coraline, just not as much as The Ocean at the End of the Lane or The Graveyard Book. Back to physical books, I read This Is How You Lose the Time War by Max Gladstone and Amal El Motar, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Um, I heard a lot of things about this one and it took me a really long time to figure out what was going on and even then I still think I'm not entirely there a couple months after reading this. So this is about two characters called Red and Blue who come from two different um, warring sides um, within a time war called The Agency and The Garden. It's kind of an enemies to lovers type story, but Red and Blue start leaving messages for each other throughout time. What starts off as being sort of a boast, one of them leaves a message that's sort of like a middle finger, being like, haha, I got here first type thing, um, ends up being a kind of game that they both start enjoying and then they both end up kind of falling for each other, that kind of thing. It's a very short book um, and I feel like, I don't know, I just wished it was longer so that there was more time to explain the world and what was going on. I feel like this could have even been a series of books. So yeah, I enjoyed it. It just took me sort of over half of the book to figure out what was going on. Then I read Untamed by Glennon Doyle. Stop pleasing, start living. It was a book that I felt like I really needed to read. This is non-fiction and has very short chapters that you can kind of flip between and dip in and out of. And it's basically Glennon Doyle's story of self-discovery, a moment in life where everything sort of clicks into place, but in order to follow what you know is right for you, you kind of have to dismantle everything else but ultimately that is for the better. That's kind of what I took away from it anyway. But it's full of just really wonderful, insightful, empowering chapters. Um, and I, I really loved every second of reading this. I feel like if you need a little bit of a boost, a bit of empowerment in your life, Untamed is definitely a book that you should pick up and read. Then I read Party Shoes by Noel Stretfield because I narrated the audiobook for it. Um, I had a lovely three or four days um, recording the audiobook um, and Party Shoes is just a really sweet story about a group of um, kids and their cousin Selena putting on a pageant because Selena has been sent a party frock and she has no occasion to wear it and so they all decide to put on a pageant which is essentially a big full-on show for the town and to raise money for charity and it's very cute it's very sweet it was written in like the 1930s 1940s and is very much of its time um but it's just a really sweet lovely book so if you kind of just want a very quintessentially british cozy read party shoes is very very sweet and you can now listen to it with me narrating it i will link below next up i read mrs death Mrs. Death by Selena Godden. And I loved this book up until a point. This book, there were so many moments in it where I was like, that is so cool, that is awesome. It's basically about death. And she befriends a writer called Wolf who becomes her scribe and starts writing down her story. And some of the stories and the tales are so great and this book kind of flits between a play of sorts to poetry to prose and then it gets to a point where it becomes sort of like a journal and this is where it lost me I i'll kind of show you um it goes into 
very short little like poems and I, I that that was where it just wasn't really for me anymore um but obviously that is the last just like the last mm, like 50 pages not even that of the book um and i just kind of wished I don't know, I wish the story had been wrapped up a little bit more. But that being said, I did really enjoy it and there were a couple of chapters that I still think about every now and again to this day since reading it. So I will leave the reading of this up to you if you fancy it. Next up is a book that has become my favourite book of all time. And I literally cannot tell you why. I loved it so, so much and that book is Daisy Jones and the Six and I know that this book has been talked about so much and I feel like I'm being a massive cliche and I'm just jumping on a bandwagon but it's a bandwagon I feel like everyone should jump on because this book is so good it's by Taylor Jenkins Reid I oh, I don't even know why I love it so much and I, <laughs> it's about a band from the 70s and why they split up and it's just about their journey to stardom and that doesn't sound like something I would pick up or something that I would read but because so many people raved about it I was like yeah sure I'll give it a go not really thinking that it would be my thing at all and I loved every single second of it it's amazing it's the best book I've ever read and before you all comment yes I have got the Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo on my shelf and I really want to read Malibu Rising which is Taylor Jenkins Reid's new book um, that has just been released um, so you all have to read this book I loved it so much it's my new favourite book of all time that I've ever read then I read The Death of Vivek Oji by Akwake Amezi I hope I'm pronouncing that right and this is just a heartbreak in a book I mean it's called The Death of Vivek Oji, so you kind of know what is coming and what is going to happen. I did really enjoy this book, but didn't get as emotional as I thought I would, and I think I know the reason why. I love a story where you know the ending, where, you know, you start off at the end and then the rest of the book is the story up until that point, whereas this book kind of flitted back and forth between past and present and I think because there was a constant reminder of what the ending is going to be and the grief that everyone is going through I think it was just too much of a reminder and I felt like instead of being told the ending and then being given enough time where it's almost like you forget what the ending's gonna be or you have enough time to become so attached to the characters that you really, really hope that somehow that isn't the ending and then when that is the ending, it's even more heartbreaking. I think because there was a constant reminder that this is the ending and then we go back to the past and then, oh, by the way, this is still what the end is gonna be. I felt like by the time we got to the inevitable, I was so desensitized to it if that makes sense. Um, but that being said, it is so beautifully written. It is such a wonderful story and an important story about being who you are and challenging the expectations that are kind of forced upon you. I think it's great. It is a great book. Um, it just didn't make me as emotional as I thought it would based on other booktubers reviews. Then I read The Lock-In by Phoebe Luckhurst. This is my proof copy um, but it is out or it's coming out this month. It might already be out um, but I loved this book. This book was so so great. This is about four people. Um, three of them are housemates. One of them is the date of a housemate and they all end up locked in the attic whilst the kitchen downstairs is flooding <laughs> filled with sort of awkward moments um, and the date of one of the housemates happens to know one of the other housemates from the past they have a very strange connection that no one could have ever foreseen and it makes for some very awkward conversations that I absolutely lived for the drama of it I loved it. It was great. Um, and there's a sort of social media element to it, a viral social media element to it that also very much just fits in with what I 
enjoy and what I enjoy reading about. Um, and it's just great. It's just a really, really fun sort of um, rom-com type read. It's great. I highly recommend The Lock-In if you fancy a fun summertime read. Next, I read The Land of Big Numbers. It's a short story collection by T. Ping Chen. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. And um, I really enjoyed this. Again, it's another one where a couple of the short stories keep coming back to me. Um, there's one, let me, let me remind myself. There's one called The Flying Machine um, and one called New Fruit. And I just i they're all just very bizarre they're all a bit weird um but that i needed that i think i've just read this at the right time it says that this book draws back the curtain on the realities of modern china and unveils a cast of characters as rich and complicated as any in world literature um and yeah it's just it's bizarre but some of the stories have really stuck with me the next book I don't have with me. It's at the theatre because I finished reading it there and I've just left it there for anyone who wants to read it. It's called If Cats Disappeared From The World and I loved this book so, so, so much. It's about a man who finds out that he is going to die tomorrow and uh, the devil comes to him and says, I will give you an extra day of life on this earth if you remove one thing from the world and it's not like he removes like his phone and just his phone he removes all phones from the world so you've got to pick something that literally gets removed completely from existence um and so we go through like phones we go through uh movies i think he erases all movies from the world and also the problem is is that the devil decides for him. He doesn't get to pick. The devil just says, if you agree to removing this thing, X thing from the world, then I will give you an extra day of living. Um, and obviously it's a very selfish thing to do. Um, and our protagonist says yes a few times over. Um, and then the devil drops the bombshell that the next thing that will be disappearing from the world, if he agrees to it, will be cats. And he has a cat called Cabbage. And you will have to read the book to find out whether he goes through with it or not. But I loved it so much. It's the type of story that is just so up my street. Um, and it's just great. I really, really, really enjoyed it. And it was very poignant and a bit emotional as well. There was moments where I was like, oh God, I need to stop reading this in the middle of the theater because I am gonna burst into tears. Um, I loved it. That's definitely a five star read from me. Then I read Cinderella is Dead by Callan Bayron, Kaylin Bayron. I'm so sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong. Please correct me in the comments. This book was so, so, so good. I loved it so much. I even then went out and bought it for Ivano for his birthday um, because he was watching me reading it and um, has been trying to read more um, throughout this rehearsal process. Um, so I got him this for his birthday and I think he'll really enjoy it as well. Um, but it's basically about this town in which the story of Cinderella is gospel. It is a story that everyone lives their lives by. Every year there is a royal ball in which all of the eligible young women will be chosen by the men of the town and it's just this really weird, warped, misogynistic, awful environment that very young girls are put through um, and if you don't get chosen your sort of your value and your worth and your status diminishes and it's just so gross and Sophia is also part of the LGBTQ plus community and so is just not here for being chosen by a man um, and she runs away from the ball and she ends up running into Constance who is a descendant of one of the stepsisters and she starts to learn the truth behind the story of Cinderella and how Prince Charming might not have been all that charming. And it's great. It's such a fun, unique twist on the story of Cinderella, which of course I'm all about at the moment. Um, so uh, another five star read, definitely pick this up. Um, and I've just bought um, 
this author's next book, which I think is called This Poison Heart. Um, and I'm very excited to read that as well. And finally, the last book that I read is a book that I mentioned in one of my last videos. It's called The Dreamers, which is about a pandemic that came out in 2019, just before the coronavirus pandemic. And it is really weird reading this book now, having just been through slash still going through a worldwide pandemic. Um, but in this pandemic, the illness is kind of unspecified, no one knows what it is, it's this new weird thing um, that no one really knows how it came to be and no one knows how to cure it but lots of people start falling asleep and just not waking up and no one can wake them up and the longer they are asleep the less likely it is that they will wake up and that they will slowly just stop breathing which is horrifying um but this book follows several different people's um stories through the pandemic um some of them are families with newborn babies some of them are single parents with young children some of them are university students again it's a bit of a slow build but then once you get past a certain point you just become so invested in everybody's stories. Um, and I I did really enjoy it. I did really, really enjoy it. If you are into reading books about pandemics whilst we are still in the middle of a pandemic, go for it. Other people might want to avoid this at all costs um, at the moment and maybe give it a little bit of time before they read this, but it's a good one. And there we have it. I will update you as time goes on as and when I read a lot more books, but they are the books that I've read since April. And let me know if you pick any of them up, let me know what you've been reading, and I will see you very, very soon. Bye.